David. Shalom Aleichem. Shalom. Stay off, stay off. Did you say hi? Who's that? It's a friend of mine. Okay. Hi. Hello. David, he wants to see your face. Hi. Can't hear him. He's on. You're on mute. Yeah, that's good. Oh, hi. Good morning. <laughs> Did you have your Honey Nut Cheerios today? I'm doing that Zumba with Jakey. Are you doing Zumba? Oh, gosh. Do you think David wants so fun? Jakey, you want, um, David. David, you want to join? Do I want to do what? Do I want to do Zumba with you? Yeah, Zumba. Do the Ricky Fader and Jake Oh, wow. That sounds very fun. Two Zumbas. The Zumba? Two of them. Two Zumbas we're doing today. I asked him if he wants to do hot yoga. When I do hot yoga? Oh. Do hot yoga? It you can put he frozen. He frozen. Yeah. He frozen. <laughs> From yoga. Maybe wait for Rabbi Sternberg to come to start the hot yoga. Yeah. Eitan, you might have to give the shear today. As you want, you want to teach them Torah. Uh, I don't know. You don't know. No, I don't know. I don't know. What usually means no. Okay, twelve. Hi, Mayor. Shavuot okay, Tov. Rabbi. Okay, tell young man. What's your name? Ezra. Ezra. You're a big Ezra to your family, that's for sure. Four and four. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear. You said he's four years old. <laughs> oh, he's four years old. Very nice, Baruch Hashem. Ad Mayor Ve'esrim. Amen. Okay. So what we would like, uh, uh, let's come down here. Okay. Shavuot Tov, David, how are you? Okay. All right. Um, I hope everybody had a wonderful Shabbos. And I would like to, uh, I want to do a piece with uh, Peleoates today. And, but I just wanted to uh, mention another piece that was very, it's a very fascinating idea that the Svasemis brings down on the Parsha, you know, that what you read on Shabbos, Parsha's Noso, the, um, the mitzvah of doing tshuva and being moda that you, that, you, that you did something wrong, you want to do tshuva, that's found in this week's Parsha, in Parsha's Noso. Where's it brought down? It's brought down in the mitzvah of Returning Gezel Hager. If someone, Chas Vashalom, stole from someone who was a Ger, and the, the, the Ger had no children, never got married and didn't have children, has no heirs. So then the question is, well, what do you do with his money if the person stole and he has an obligation to return it, but there's no address to return it to? So the question is, so what, what is he going to do to do tshuva? So the Chumash came up with an idea and it told us, Hashem said, that you should give it to the Kohanim. That's where you do, that's how you'll do tshuva, by bringing it to the Kohanim. So the Swasemis points out a very, very interesting connection. He says, why is it by the Avera of theft do we learn the idea of doing tshuva? So he wants to say that the source of all Averas comes from theft. How, where do you see that? He wants to point out. He says, because Hashem gave us capabilities. Each one of us, our strengths, our weaknesses, whatever it is, everyone, Hashem gave us our capabilities. 
He wants us to use all those capabilities to accomplish and to do something with them in a positive way. And if we misuse that, if we misuse those capabilities for other things, we are stealing, in effect, from the, the, the strengths that Hashem gave us to use. Hashem wanted us to use it in a certain way. And we're misusing it. We're misusing those funds. All that investment that Hashem put in us, we're misusing it. That's called theft. And he wants to say, therefore, that is the source of our Averis. That's the source of all Averis, that you, someone is using what, the gifts that Hashem gave him in an improper way. And therefore, the mitzvah of tshuva is learned out, is taught to us from this mitzvah, by this, the mitzvah of tshuva is taught to us by the Aveira of Gezel. That was his insight, a very interesting insight. So there are two pieces that the Peleyowitz discusses. Hopefully we'll do that <coughs> today and tomorrow, Mitzvah Hashem. First one I would want to focus in on is the concept of choser, lacking, somebody lacking. So uh, he mentioned, he starts out like this, and he says, Ein lucha odom, there's no one person in the world, she'ein bo eza choser b'midot. Everyone is lacking something. Someone is, every person has a, has a, has a certain, we're not perfect. We're not perfect. Everyone, everyone has a certain lacking in him. Ubedeus or in an understanding. Kishem she yavshan, just like it's impossible. The bar below Teben. Food, when you, when you bring in food, there's always dirt on it, something else. There's always something, it's not 100% pure. It says, kach, so too. It's impossible for a person not to make a mistake. The Gemara in Gittin, I think it's Mem Gimel, points out that a person learns from his mistakes. Like we always, like we say in English, you made a mistake, you learn from your mistakes. You're not condemned because you made a mistake. That's that's the nature of people. No one ever. Moshe Rabbeinu made mistakes. Now again, we would, again one thing we need to be clear about: we we can't equate Moshe Rabbeinu with anything that we do. Um, it's, it's a very beautiful idea that uh, Rabbi Tversky points out. The, the Gemara in Shabbos mentions that if we look at the Rishonim, the earlier ones in our history, if we look at them as Malachim, then we are B'nai Odom, we're like people. However, if we look at our earlier ones as B'nai Odom, then we're like a behemoth, we're like animals. So the simple understanding is, is that th th that's the difference in the levels, and that's how things have changed so radically We've gone down to such different levels. But he wants to take it, he takes it from a different perspective. He says, if we understand that Moshe Rabbeinu is a malach, he's basically a malach, Abraham Rabbeinu is a malach, David Amela, these are malachim. Then he said, then we're, we're looking at things correctly. Then we understand exactly who we are and trying to grasp on some level who, who, who our leaders were. So because the best we could ever do is we could look at who we, we saw in our lifetime and we say that, uh, they were better than that. But, you know, whoever we look to in our generations, in this generation, the previous generation, however great they went, uh, everybody talks about, you know, the Chavetz Chaim, whoever it is, how great he was, well, we can have a certain understanding of it, then, well, we say then Hillel and Shammai, and all, they were better than that. But there's such, a, there's such a chasm between the two that it's unfathomable. And then when you go from Hillel and Shammai to Avram you know, it, it's another unfathomable chasm. So therefore, we have to realize that it's on a different league. It's a malach. It's a whole different uh, reality. But if you look at them, that they're people, so then you, got, you are, in a certain respect, bringing down all... Again, they are people, but uh, not, not they can't be understood as people. They lived in this world, but they were malachim who lived in this world. And therefore, he says, if you look at them, well, Moshe Rabbeinu is a human being, and I'm a human being. So in, in a very you know, crass way, we are equating, and there's no room for that equation. And that's why he says, that's what the Gemara says, he wants to say that if we look at them as human beings, then we're basically a behemoth. There's no, there's no you can't compare the two. It's just, uh, you know, there's no equation. Anyway, so, but everyone, as we said, no one is perfect. Everyone makes mistakes. Vain shalem ba'olam. The only perfect one in this world is Hatsur Hatamim. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Ki Kol Drachav Mishpat, everything that Hashem does is perfect. Well, therefore, La Hashim La Adam, to accuse someone, 
Shinimtsabo is a davar. In other words, if you're going to look at someone, you're going to see someone, and you're going to see a shortcoming. You're going to see a flaw in the person's personality. If you're going to make that, lahashim means to make that person guilty. If you're going to you know, look at that person and, 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 his, and he's guilty that he has that flaw, he's a davar sheinu tov that you find this a problem. Shigam hu kamohu, that you, you'll find by you also in In other words, if you if you want to look at a person's flaws, then you can might you might as well look at yourself also. Elishakol Hanagoyim Adimro, the problem is with famous statement over here, that all blemishes, any any character flaws in a person, we always see them in others. Chutzmi nigayatsmo, but a person never sees his own flaws. Right, that it's it's a it's a mission, and the mission the mission is a, a true idea that a Kohen, when he checks out someone to see he has saras, he's only allowed to check from someone else. He's not allowed to check his own. But the Bali Musa take that statement and they apply it in a from a Musa perspective that people see flaws in others, but they don't see their own flaws. Everyone thinks that they're perfect. Every everybody else is wrong. There's something wrong with them, not with myself. People do not find themselves that they are guilt that they can they're not guilty. Uh, you know, we always see, in other words, um, which we'll see a little bit later on, but um, everyone is always pushing the the blame on somebody else. It's his fault. It's his fault. It's our fault. No one is ever prepared to take on that responsibility that maybe I did something incorrect. People always are finding others that it's, it's their fault, not mine. But, and that's why by great people, they're able to, to accept it, to accept responsibility. And there's a possibility, he says, it could be that what you're lacking, it could be what you're lacking might even be more severe than what that person's lacking. Each one is being judged, each one's judged individually. And therefore, it's an obligation upon each person. He is bonain to think, which is a big thing these days. Right? First, you have to think. Look first. First, look to see what you, where you're holding. See what needs to be worked on from you. And if you, on your own, cannot understand where you see there's lacking, then listen to others. Go to, go to other people and they'll, they'll give you advice. If a person's really interested, you, you, you should, I mean, people, people would look to have others give them a critique to see exactly what can I work on. Rabbi Miller used to have a very beautiful idea. He used to say, um, the metaphor he gave was, he says, very often you find women like to look at mirrors and uh, very often, They'll use mirrors that magnify the face. Those you have mirrors which, which uh, minimize, and you have mirrors which magnify. So he says, why would why would a woman want to look in a mirror that magnifies? So, right? If anything, a person wants to minimize their blemishes. They don't want to see them. On the contrary, they want to minimize it. So why did why are they looking to magnify them? Did it make sense? He said the answer is is because. When they see these blemishes, they want to remove them. They don't want them to be there. They want, they want to be as attractive as they can be. So if there's a blemish there, they want to remove it. Even if it's small, even if it's the smallest thing, they want to remove it. So he, he would use that metaphor to explain why so many times the Chumash and, and the Navi would talk about the Jews and make it sound like it was... Uh, an, an enormous catastrophe on the Jewish people. And for example, which, which you know, which I'm sure you're all familiar with by the Cheda Egel, for example. Cheda Egel, there were 3,000 people that were actively involved in the Avodah Zorah. So basically that turns out to be one-tenth of one percent. In other words, 99.9% .9 of the Jewish people were actively involved in the Avodah Zorah. And yet when we read it in the Chumash, it's an enormous, tragedy, and it, and it is, because the Jews were held on a certain level. Uh, they, were more, they were more guilty by, by uh, being quiet and not protesting. They, they, needed, they were expected to speak up and to put down that, that movement. And just by standing there and, and being silent, they were held guilty of that. 
and that certainly applied to many Jews, but the active participants was one tenth of one percent, and the Chumash makes it seem so, you know, en enormous. And, and he said, he would explain the reason is, is because if you, again, another example he would give, he said, if you call up the, um, the you know, the department of, of, what, of, of the streets, whatever, in, in New York, he would say, if you call up and you say that there's a, um, you know, a hole in the street. Well, how big is it? So you would tell them it's a ping pong ball size. They'll just, you know, they'll ignore it and they'll, they'll get back to you in 2022. If you tell them it's the size of a garbage can, so then you have a chance they're going to, um, re, you know, they'll respond to what you had to say. So the same thing over here. And as you tell somebody, you're 99.9% .9 amazing. So, wow, that's, a, that's phenomenal. That uh, means I'm on the top 1% of everybody in the world. So good, that's great, that's wonderful. But he said the Chumash wants all of us, even if we're 99.9, .9, the Chumash wants us to become 99.95. We should never be prepared to accept our present situation if there's room for growth. This is what he used to mention all the time, that the Torah wants that each Jew should strive to the greatest attempt at perfection as he could reach. And if the Chumash is, you know, maybe praying to the Jewish people over there, said if they're going to tell us, you know, you're, you're unbelievable, you're 99, you're doing phenomenal, there's one thing. So a person was saying, okay, it's one thing, well, you know, it's not so terrible. But the Chumash want, and the Navi wanted us to understand, no, if there's room for improvement, then we have to uh, 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 you know, attempt it and to, to move in that direction. That it, it's, it, it takes a lot of uh, you know, discipline and, and an understanding how, because again, the idea is, which I'm sure again, many of you understood, if you're looking at a diamond and every small, every small cut in it makes an enormous difference. If you're dealing with, uh, I don't know, with something big, you know, let's say you have a car and there's slight scratch, a slight, slight, slight scratch in the car, nobody will ever see it. The price will still be the same. But if you, if you, if you move that over to a diamond and there's a slight, slight, slight scratch in it, it can, be a, it can drop the price or the value of that diamond just dropped completely because it's not the same. So if we understand that our neshama is more precious than anything that we can imagine, more precious than any diamond, so then any slight imperfection in it makes a difference. And that's why the Torah wants that we should make it our mindset that we should try to look for as, as, as much as we can work on ourselves in our lifetime, that should be a goal of ours. And that's what he's discussing over here in the Peleoites over here. That if we can't see ourselves because we're very often very subjective and we're blind and we don't see, we think that, you know, we're great, we're good guys, what's the matter? You know, I'm amazing. We have, it's good to have a good opinion of yourself. That is important, no question about it. A person should have a, a healthy, positive opinion of himself. But we realize that there are things that need to be worked on. And sometimes we don't want to do that. We don't want to see that because that's going to take a lot of work. And, but again, if we're going to appreciate what we can come away with, so then that's always important. In other words, try and uh, understand what the difference is going to be. We, if we look at what, you know, you, you always have the before and the after pictures, right? People do that all the time. They're working on, you know, uh, what, diets or whatever else it may be. They always have the before and after pictures because they want you to see something of what's going to be afterwards. So that'll give you that uh, drive and that incentive, that motivation to keep going on because it can be a, a long haul. The first 10 pounds is one thing, but then when you start getting after that, it's, uh, it doesn't move as fast and then you need a, a lot of motivation. And that's the same thing over here. When, when we're looking to uh, work on our spiritual neshama, we want to also work in that direction. So if you don't see it, then ask a Talmud Chacham. Or even if you can't have a Talmud Chacham, then, then ask others. Do you know anything? Is there something that you could possibly tell me about myself that I would want, that I need to know and that I need to work on? Because again, a lot of us have some false impressions of how we are, how we appear in other people's eyes. And some people, uh, you know, there are certain things about the person's personality that should be worked on, but you know, 
people generally don't say anything because they try to be nice. But if the person's really serious and the other one wants his benefit, then it's doing an, an enormous uh, benefit. And don't become upset. In other words, when you ask for somebody, can you point out something that I should work on? A lot of times people would used to do this before Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, all the things that I can work on. During Elul, what can I work on on myself? You know, I don't see. So do you have some suggestions? So very often you do it, but you're hoping to say, oh no, you're amazing, you're the best. And then they tell you something, you get all, you blow up at them. What do you mean? Right, so don't do that because then you're, uh, you're not taking advantage. You think that I'm like a fool? Don't try to uphold yourself with all sorts of uh, false reasons. Because that's the way people who are negative, they're the ones that are always justifying why they're doing certain things and they have excuses. Everybody has excuses of why they do certain things. A person should be a God-fearing person. And to accept uh, a suggestion if he feels that it's, it's fair. Even if it doesn't really penetrate. Yasha straight away. Accept it. If that person gives you a suggestion, you know he's an expert in these things and you should want to take it upon yourself. And even though you feel that, no, maybe the, the criticism or the, the idea was a little bit misplaced, you should, on the contrary, he's saying you should submit to that person, be humble and accept that person because he knows a little bit more than you do. And try to do things differently. Day by day, you know, again, as we point out many times, you can't make, uh, like, like we said, we quoted Rabbi Shal Salant, a number of times to change one character trait is more difficult than to learn all of Shas. It, go, it, goes, it goes hard and, and it's not easy, but it, but it can be done. And any improvement that the person makes is an enormous change. That's something that always has to be understood. It's never all or nothing. It's never all or nothing. Whatever difference we make, if someone has to smoke cigarettes, he's smoking, uh, I don't know, he's smoking 40 cigarettes a day. So he knocks it down to 39. That's something too. That's something that's going to make it. It will make a difference. So too in these areas also, if a person has certain character flaws, if he if he works on it even for two minutes out of the day differently, he won't do that. Those two minutes a day is an enormous difference. until he can work on himself and and to acquire for himself a certain perfection. Kasha yuchal to extent he can. Like we say, famous idea in Tana Debe Eliyahu, that a person has to ask himself that question, when will I be like my Avos? In other words, these are our, these are our ancestors. And that, again, we have to understand that this is, they, what, what, is it, what, is, what does it mean that Avram Yisrochana are Avos? An Av, just like we understand in the physical world, your parents pass on what we call your genetics. You have a certain DNA that is passed on, certain qualities, physical qualities you have in the DNA. So what we're learning over here is what Tana de Beilio is, is pointing out to us is that don't think that the Ovos were, were just, that, that was them and it, it stopped there. The answer is no, that's not true. If they're your Av, if they're your parent, that means they passed on to you certain spiritual DNA. You have it within you. You just have to pull it out. It's there from. It's there within you. In your neshama, you have it because they passed it on to you. It's just that you have to, you know, realize that it's there and to pull from it. And that's why that statement is being said over here. We have to. We have to ask ourselves, when? When can I be like that? Because we have to set that as a goal for ourselves. B'chayin therefore tzorach lahachzik tova. Person should appreciate. If a person gives you a suggestion on what to work on, you should be ever thankful to such a person. If you point out something to a person who's a chocham, who appreciates these things, he's going to love you because you, you helped him. You're doing something for him. You do, you're, you're, help, you're helping him perfect himself. So what, what better gift can you give someone is, is, is an ability to be able to become the best he can.
There's nothing greater than that, like it says. Because if someone causes someone to sin, you have, you have done more damage to that person than had you killed him. If you cause that person to sin, you're, you're destroying his neshama, you're taking away his eternity. In this world, he's there for 120 years. But in his, in his, in his olam hanashama, he's there for eternity. And if you cause him to sin, you are robbing him as a, of his eternity. You're worse than a murderer. But on the other hand, if you help out someone in his spiritual world, you've done him the greatest gift that you can imagine. Greater than saving his physical life because you're giving him an eternal life now. You're giving him something that is he's going to have the netzach netzachin. If you imagine how a person is, is ever in, in indebted to a physician or to a lifeguard or someone that saved the person, he saved his life, he would do everything and anything for such a person. So over here also in the spiritual world, if you can do something to give a person his life, you are, you're indebted for eternity. And he says, listen to this, he points out. He says, even if in truth, what he said was a, was a, a misjudgment, it was a miscall. It, it's not true. The person really is not lacking in that area. The Chaveru Toa and his friend made a mistake in, in, in assuming that. Al Kaponim Roy Lahaksek Lo Tova, but still, you should still be appreciative of such a person. He wanted to do good for you. He wanted to do something positive. He wanted to help you out. It's like, you know, I don't know, your stockbroker or whoever. I mean, he's interested in for himself, really. But if you have a good friend, he wants to give you a a good piece of advice and it didn't work out. So are you gonna be angry at your friend? He wanted to give you a, a good idea, you know, a piece of real estate, a piece of stock or whatever else, a good business venture, things like that. He, was, he had you in mind, he wanted to do something, even if it didn't work out the way, the way you would have liked it to, but you're still gonna appreciate him because he tried. He had, a good, he had good intentions. But don't, don't say these things <coughs> in front of others. And those, if you have, if you have, uh, suggestions to give to someone, don't say these things over in front of others. In Yesh Lochish, if you're concerned, Sheyalbim Pane Pane, that it might embarrass him. The Yavish Esrei Chol, and it'll make him look bad. Shaz Shkila Tivusa, the Shadia Chizri, so then all, all the good you did, you might as well just throw it out. Because you, you, you ruined everything by doing that. Lufiha Emes, Ein Chisorin Ba'olam, Kechisorin Hadas. The greatest lacking that there is in this world is someone who doesn't understand things. And uh, there's no greater poor person if someone is lacking in understanding of things. Like it says in Vayikra Rabbah, if you're lacking understanding, what do you have? Like Shlomo Melech says, if people think that they're doing is right. And Shlomo says, if you see someone who thinks that he's a Talmud Chacham, right? Tikfus l'ksil mimenu. A fool is better off than him. So what do we say? I have to stop here in a second. Hine ki kein ha'ish ha'chafetz chayim. If someone wants life, el binos, don't rely on your way, uh, what you understand. Always ask suggestions from people who you know are expert in those areas. Obviously, you don't ask somebody who doesn't know these areas. You don't, you wouldn't go to uh your friend and ask for medical advice if you know he knows, doesn't know anything about medicine. So then why would you go ask somebody on spiritual advice on someone who is not familiar with, with that world? So you have to obviously speak to people who are expertise in those areas and then ask them, how, what, what could I work on to help my neshama to be as great as it can be? Right? Um, fine. One second, because I want to... Right. Uh, so, all right. Oh, she and he wrote the bird, so now she I want. Okay, yeah, okay, fine. That that's the idea over here. Mr. Shem tomorrow, I guess we'll finish it up, I hope. Mr. Shem will finish up this piece. But on in the meantime, are there any uh points I should that you have, gentlemen, or we're good? Rabbi, that hit the spot. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Mayor. Okay, have a wonderful day, boys. Everybody. Have a great day. Enjoy. Amir Tzashem will pick up tomorrow then. Okay. All the best.